Grow your purpose. Grow your wealth. Grow your impact. Find out how to spend less time in the dental chair and more time on the things you love. Welcome back to the Dental Wealth Podcast. Back in the studio, we're on a little bit of a streak here. I got Mr. Morn, the man, the myth, the legend himself in the building as always. Welcome back. And that streak is happening with a lot of freaking travel. <laughs> There's still a little yes. travel in there. So or a lot of travel in there, but we're here we are again, and I'm happy to be back. And we've got a great guest next week. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that, excited about the work we're doing, and uh, I'm excited about our topic today, Matthew. Yeah, I think um, anytime we can get in the studio and just kind of go off the cuff, as you guys know, we, we don't really come with anything planned. I think, you know, five minutes to give you a background, a sneak peek of how this operation works is about five minutes before this, Eric and I just say, you know, why? Right, so what do we want to talk about? And we just go through conversations that we've had the last week, anything that we've read or anything that we saw on the news, and we just bring it up and talk about it. So Eric said he had something in particular that he saw that caught his attention that we're going to talk about today. So I'm in the dark, just like the listeners today. So I'll let you take it away <laughs> well, there, Eric. <clears throat> well, in true Eric fashion, I'm always um, researching. I'm always listening. I'm always, you know, I encourage anyone listening to this to have their ear to the ground. It's so interesting that when I'm in line or a place that's somewhere I'm, I'm listening to usually a book or something and you know people are on their Instagram or whatever but there's there's amazing content and and, and I was listening to uh, something from Peter Diamantis and uh, you know it, it's uh, and really was talking about this idea of the curiosity mindset which got me thinking and and he, he was talking about the curiosity mindset the idea of of the idea of, of, of being just so darn curious, the abundance mindset, <clears throat> believing in collaboration and and uh, you know pushing for collaboration, exponential mindset, which really thinking in terms of you know exponential versus organic linear growth, and then the idea of a what he calls a moonshot mindset. And if you know anything about Peter Diamantis' background, it's heavily in space. And he went to MIT and he's best friends with Elon Musk and he wrote a book called Abundance and it's all amazing stuff. So if you if you don't know much about Peter DeMontis, I would encourage you to do so. But it was thinking maybe thinking about as I was listening to this, this idea of being curious. It's uh, you know, in in a in a consulting or coaching relationship, I think the idea of curiosity is so important. I think it's important in our lives and so I'll start this podcast with this kind of thought process around curiosity. You know, when we get into questions, it's, it's uh, you know, the Tony Robbins, I think one said this just came into my mind as I'm talking to you, Matthew, which is, is that the quality of your life depends on the quality of your questions. And I would say that people don't have enough great questions. And I'll give you an example right away. What the heck does this have to do with dental? Everything. So it's with my, my uh, elite group about, I want to say a month ago or so. And I looked at them all and I said, I know exactly what's holding each one of you back. We're like, okay, this is our growth rate. This is why we want it. This is where we're going to get it. This is the time period smart, right? So we know what that is. Now that we've got that in place, we can then say, all right, what are our limiting constraints to help us get there? Because as a leader, as a CEO, as a management team, as a leadership team, your job is to identify constraints. One of the biggest things that happens when somebody gets out of a dental chair and they ask me, Eric, what do I do now? This. Because then they go back and say, okay, if I'm out in a dental chair, what should I be doing? You should be focusing on constraints. You should be focusing on constraints, or you should have a manager who's focused on constraints, but you should at least be able to identify them and know what they are. And whether you want to hear it or not, I know the exact next move you need to make to transform your business. And I'm not just talking about some organic linear growth. I'm talking about big growth, gigantic yeah. growth. And so... That would go to the question then, which would make sense, which is a great question you could ask is, hey, Eric, what's holding me back, right? And in a coaching call, right, somebody might say like, like for instance, I was on a call yesterday and, I, and uh, the person was, was talking a lot and I could tell they were a little nervous because they hadn't gotten things done, maybe that they wanted to get done. And I could see that happening during the phone call. 
and those filler words that were coming in. But the truth is we go back down to this idea of being curious and it's like we are we're in a situation here where we have a curiosity mindset, right? So so asking better questions. One thing I realize if I'm completely vulnerable, sometimes Matthew and you know this is I talk too damn much. <laughs> I still told the other day, I was like, I talk too much. Sometimes I just need to right. And so this has to do with dental wealth because if you're gonna truly explode your organization, the greatest people ask the greatest questions. And, and I'll give you an example, um, you know, Frank, who's a friend of ours and, and, uh, you know, I think a powerhouse in the dental industry and, um, owns, um, Highbridge and, and is just so many of our clients utilize that resource. When I sit down with Frank, all he does is ask questions. He has the most deep questions sometimes. And sometimes it almost makes you feel uncomfortable, right? But he's always asking questions. And I think that's really, really good for you to understand and in, in on this podcast. So you're going to grow in a group. You're going to grow your organization. You're going to grow um, the next step. And so what we often do is we walk into rooms with our demands. We walk into our rooms with, um, you know, why don't, why don't you do this better? You need to be doing that better. And so it, we're in a demonstrative mode sometimes as we're kind of forcing the organization to go where it needs to be. But oftentimes, what would probably be more helpful is a question in those circumstances, right? Why yeah. do you think we're having a challenge doing that versus why don't you do that, right? Why why is ultimately, why are patient flow, why is patient flow struggling or whatever it ends up being, right? Why do we not have more capital? Um, what is my next yeah. big move that could that could allow us to double? Is is it is there an ability for us to double as an organization this year? What would that be if 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 I was mm-hmm. going to double? All of you listening have the opportunity to double this year as long as you have access to capital and the mindset to do so. But you have to think to yourself when you're thinking through that, just purely is is, you know, what's holding us back. So I think that there's. People walk into rooms oftentimes, and I'll shut up here in a second and let you talk, Matthew, but people walk into rooms sometimes and they, they're they so full of ego sometimes. And I don't mean ego in an egotistical way or, or a negative way, actually. I don't mean it that way. I just mean it's so full of like, I'm in charge, I'm, in, I'm the leader, I'm, I'm, this is my role. And we're so far sometimes in ego that we don't, we don't stop and just ask questions right and we we don't just ask simple questions and those questions oftentimes will will allow us to understand where where our holes are in our in our organization especially as we grow in scale yeah and i think from what i've seen the curiosity sometimes oh it's like opening pandora's box sometimes people are afraid to know what the answer is to those questions so they just don't ask them They, they lack curiosity because they're afraid of what's to come when they find out what it is i think when you get curious it will open up doors like you'll start like looking at things differently but not all of them are going to end up being you know the door that opens up to paradise some of them it's going to be a bad door that you open but you had to be curious to know that and that goes back to you know we did a podcast uh, a month or two back and we got a lot of great feedback was the the idea of being like risk averse like how risky are you like are you yeah. taking chances it's the same thing with curiosity i mean you have to be curious in order to in order to grow your business in order mm. to, and even in your personal life you know um we just caroline and i got back from um our honeymoon recently and you know, half the experiences we had on the actual trip itself was just because we were being curious. We wanted to go see, hey, there's this archeological site or there's this random restaurant in the middle of nowhere. Let's go in there and start talking to the locals and try to have pasta. If we weren't curious, we would just be kind of in our own shell and be just like every other tourist that was out there that time. And that's just kind of a personal example is sometimes you just, it's, you gotta be uncomfortable. You got to make yourself uncomfortable. When we when we're curious, we become uncomfortable. But the best things happen when you're uncomfortable. You start realizing certain things. Well, it's interesting. I was having a conversation with, and this is how curiosity affects scalability. I was having a conversation on Wednesday or Thursday um, with a family office, and uh, so a family office, if you don't know, is is basically uh, it's almost in a sense private equity owned by an individual. 
And so they have, they have a large investment fund and their family invests this money. When I was talking to this gentleman and he said, you know, I really have no, no desire to run the management of a dental corporation. I don't want to do that. I don't want to build that. But Eric, if you had the right managed company, dental company, I would be willing to invest capital in that company. Really neat because what ends up happening is there's so many dental practices out there right now that maybe the bank has run out of capital as far as lending to them. Maybe they're hitting a wall. Maybe they need more capital. Maybe they are running things well. They are curious and they are implementing, but they've hit this wall. And so curiosity might lead to who would lend me money inside of my business without wanting to control it? Are there people that would lend me money to my business either through through some sort of a venture debt or or equity? But would are there people that would lend me money or there are people that would take a share a stake in my business? I'll give you an example of what I was asked the other day, which was somebody said, "Hey, it was a great curious question. Hey, would Eric be willing to participate with me?" And the, the, the doctor ultimately had said, hey, listen, I've heard about the work Eric does. If he's that good, why don't we just change out the fee and you can participate with me. And then if we go up, great. And if we don't, then there's no harm to foul, right? And I said, yeah. I mean, what do you think I said? Of course I would do that, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> so my whole point of that is to say, because he was curious, he asked a question, hey, would Eric participate in my upside? If, you know, if he ultimately, so there's an investment on both sides. I have to invest capital when it comes to team and resources and time. He has to ultimately hand over some equity if I hit the goals, right? So that's a, mm -hmm. it was, he asked a curious question. Hey, I, I would love to bring a partner in a sense into helping me grow this extent. Well, that's that was a question. Now, how many times have I, in my entire dental career, have I ever been asked that on the front side of a transaction? Never. But he was curious, right? Hey, would yeah. you be open to doing this? And so so curiosity sometimes is we're going to grow and scale when I talk about this. Now, Peter Diamantes is a billionaire and I tend to listen to billionaires. So when when a, when a billionaire speaks, I shut up and listen, right? Because it's time yeah. to listen because they know something I don't know or, you know, whatever, or they've actualized maybe what I know or whatever you want to look at it. So... When I think about that, so when I listen to, to someone who's a billionaire say, hey, listen, this is something you should know. Like I hang out with Elon Musk, I have, hang out with Jeff Bezos, I hang out with these guys, and one of the things that you'll find in them is they're so curious. They're so curious about the world. They're so curious about collaboration. Even the next topic in this video I was listening to is abundance mindset. And even abundance mindset takes curiosity, which is this, this idea then of there are other people who would collaborate with me if I was going to build a hundred million dollar organization or whatever it was, who could be my who to help me collaborate. So, so there's a, a dance of who, not how, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're curious, you would say who could help me build this to a hundred million dollar organization. I just got an email the other day from a gentleman who's like, Hey, I'm, I'm sitting at this type of revenue. I'm going through a very complex transaction. I don't know how to do this. Can I pay you to help? Right? So, so what ends up happening is when we start talking through this idea of curiosity and abundance, they kind of go together. Well, if I wanted to build a hundred million dollar organization, who would I need to collaborate with? Who would I need to speak to? Who would I need to get advice and counsel from? What kind of, um, um, professionals would I need around me, right? I would need the best tax advice. I would need great consulting. Not like, I got to ask like, you know, I don't want a consultant who's dealing with 800,000 hour practices. That's not what I want. I want someone more sophisticated. And so, so when we get into these conversations, it's like, I need you to hear me on this. Like, this is the good stuff. Like understand is like, if you sat down and you, and you listed from this podcast, <clears throat> what's holding me back? What's the biggest thing that's holding me back? What's the greatest multiplier inside of my business, right? If I hired one person who could explode my business, who would it be or what would they have to have as far as talents and abilities? Who has access to capital who would not want to take control of my business, would allow me to continue to manage it, but would be, would be in a partner in the investment and growth of my practice? And on and on and on and on. And if we got that curious, 
Mm-hmm. Man, we could we could we could list so much stuff that you would be like, oh my gosh, I've got like a whole marching orders of stuff here to do because I'm just curious. Curiosity is 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 so unique. The highest forms of curiosity are unique to the billionaires. It, it's 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 the Elon Musk that says, well, what if we built a car company that was to do this? Well, what if we tried to privatize space travel? What if we found a rocket that ultimately speaking could land safely so that we weren't having to spend, right? See so these questions, is that possible? And so, so when you start to get into your practice, the greatest thing you can do is ask questions. The worst thing you can do is to say, I know this. And I'll give you an example. We had somebody who, who, it, who, I ran into recently who's probably the lowest form of sophistication, but yet said that they could run a mastermind. And I thought, I thought they need better questions, right? Their growth isn't where it needs to be, but yet they're going to run a mastermind, which means they think they have the answers, but that's, that means they're not asking the right question, right? There's, there's questions missing. And this curiosity mindset is a mindset that is, is one we don't talk about a lot. We talk about abundance mindset and scarcity mindset. But what about a curiosity mindset? What about the idea of, of just being so damn curious? Like even if you were to have a conversation, like I don't know about you, Matthew, and I know I'm talking a lot and you're not getting a chance. I'm just, I don't know. I'm going to roll this morning, Matthew. So I'm just, let, I'm just letting you go. <laughs> so imagine <laughs> sitting down there, right? So if you're, if you're in a room with somebody, are you the loudest person in the room? Are you talking the most? Are you sitting there like a wallflower? Are you asking questions, great questions? And I've been in rooms before where I'm just talking, 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 because you got to, I got to fill the air or something, right? But it's like you can fill the the air with great questions, and you have to become a master of great questions. And if you could become a master of great questions, man, how that would transform your practice, your life, your trajectory, your net worth, all of it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it's important for you guys to know, too, there's, I look at it as kind of two levels of curiosity, okay? So the first level is you have to be curious to kind of get to where you need to go. So if you're a practice right now and let's say you're doing 1.5 million and you're still kind of struggling with operational functions, you're still kind of struggling with marketing, like how do I take it to the next phase to go to maybe multiple locations or to 2.5 to 3.5. You have to be curious in the nature of, all right, I still need a lot of stuff to get done. Sometimes you can be overly curious and then it's almost like letting the tax tail wag the dog. You'll get overly curious and it'll take you chasing shiny diamonds, those type of things will take you off track from what you're doing. You need to set your business up to a point where you can just be curious. Like the billionaires, the reason why Elon can have the functions and he's able to go say, oh, well, why don't I create a, a boring company that can build a, a train station from LA to, to Dallas? It's because he has everything kind of in line with what he's created to that point that he can be overly curious and start exploring different options. So I think it's important for um, some of you listeners is, you know, we can get into that phase too where we have, you know, some clients that just, are all idea people. And then sometimes you just have to tell them, you need to go execute on these things before you start looking at other ideas. So I think it's important for you to realize you gotta have a healthy balance between curiosity and execution um, for most of our listeners. Some of you, there's a probably 25% of you listeners, I can just focus in, like it's time to just switch to curiosity. How can, uh, curiously thinking, how can I go from 5 million to 25 million in the next 24 months? What would I need to do to be able to do that? Well, I, I'm going to go back to your one of your points. By the way, if, if you guys just heard a little something, it's because one of my videos I was talking about, I just hit the button. My, see my back. I'll close it down my laptop. See, I, I, I listen. See, I was proof positive, right? Don't ADHD wait, don't, is a yeah. real symptom. <laughs> <laughs> This is where we plug in an ADHD commercial. Trust Ta-da. but verify. Yeah, trust but verify. So I'm, I'm. So this is a great question. So so look at this. Is going back to what Matthew said just now. I'm going to reiterate. Um, so a client sent me this, um, and uh, she said uh, so somebody was curious about tower. So curiosity. Hey, I see you use tower leadership, and in, in later posts mentioned you are no longer chair side thanks to tower leadership. Can you tell me more about tower? See that starts with a curiosity. Right. Instead of coming from a standpoint of, of, you know, tell me about them. I just want to know. Like it was like, hey, I'm curious. You got them out of chair side dental because of Tower. I love to know more about your experience. 
And she goes on, so our client goes on to say that, yes, that uh, when I was, when I acquired my practice um, and I'd hit a point, I was ready to sell everything at a loss and walk away. Um, it always sounds like a commercial, but working with them helped me work through that and learn more how to run a practice. Now, she does go on to say that it requires the work, as you said. So it requires you actually doing the work. You can't just sign up and sit around. You got to actually do the work. But yeah, if you do the work, you can get out of chair side dentistry and you can then just focus on the business and be entrepreneurial. And so it starts with a great question. And if you get that great question, and so so sometimes even when you're interviewing a company, right? So so instead of being so skeptical, which by the way, she does say I was skeptical at first when I, when I first started working with Tower. I mean, she didn't know us. Now she has multiple occasions and doesn't work clinically, but but um, so when you're skeptical, and that's okay to be skeptical, just ask better questions. Like instead of being so adversarial sometimes, which I think people are, um, they're always afraid they're gonna get conned or something. <laughs> like just ask better questions. Like in, in, and ask questions about certain things that the deeper you can ask of a question, and, and I will tell you this from my career, I've worked with a lot of wealthy people and I've made a lot of people wealthy, but what, separates the people at the top, the the top. And I was talking to this billionaire last week and we were talking about, he said, you know, Eric, and he went through all the numbers with me. He said, 4% of your clients, 4%, no matter who, no matter what organization you work with, no matter 4% are elite, like 4%, 20% do 80% of the results, but there's 4% that's the elite. That's like the elite, 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 the outlier. And so he says, he says tell me about them. You know, what do they have in common? Um, because they're the elite. And I said, they ask better questions. They don't think they have the answers. They don't think they, they know it all. And then they implement. I was like, they yeah. just, they, 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 they ask the question. And then they, instead of being so darn skeptical of every piece of advice they get, they just go implement. In fact, the people that have had the most success working with us for over the years have always said, I just take what they tell me to do and I do it. And so, so it's like the skeptical, instead of curiosity, hey, what would it look like if I actually just listened to the advice and did it? Versus questioning the advice and questioning it. I did a video on my Instagram where I said, you know, are you sure you wanna be the top 1%? And it, you go to my Instagram, it's tagged at the very first video, Eric J. Moran. So, so, and it says, like, are you sure you're ready to do it than different than 99% of all dentists. Because if that's the case, why in the heck are you calling your dental friends who are not in the 1% and asking them what they're doing, how much they're paying people, whether they use a consultant, what's their, why are you asking the 99% what they're doing? Because obviously they don't have the keys. Maybe a better question would be, what if I asked the one percent, right? What would, what is the one yeah. percent in dental doing? Do do I think that when they get advice, they implement, of course, they are, in, they're the implementers. They're the ones that are making it happening. Do they question every piece of advice they get? No, it's just like me questioning every piece of dental advice you get. Do they, yeah. you know, and, and on and on and on. And they might say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to have, you know, this person move into this operations person. If, is this the right person to move into this position or should I look outside? Like, so there's questions that if we ask a better set of questions, we get a different future. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, that's to the nature of growing a business to even in your life, to have a better life, to have a better business, you have to be curious. At some point you just, the second part of that's the crucial part, which is the implementation part, the execution part. It's, you know, we joke all the time is like, you look at companies that say like Tesla, for instance, and then you have probably, I would say 60% of the population's like, wow, Elon had it easy. He sold PayPal. He had a lot of funding. It was such an easy ride to build it. And then you have the other 40% that's probably less than 40%. That's like, no, it was a lot of a hell of a lot of hard work to do it. And you, you have to be curious in the aspect of, all right, so how did he do it? So if you're, if you're looking at, if you're sounding like you want to be in the 1%, just like you were saying, they're 99% of dental practice. And then there's that 1%, that 1% has a different set of problems. Okay. So before you even say that you're in the 1%, you have to be willing to do what the 1% has done. 
to get there. And it's a very difficult process. You have to be curious and learn that you're gonna fail along the way, but you have to implement the strategies in place in order to grow the business. So it all comes full circle when you look at your business. You need to, you know, we're coming towards the end of, which is crazy, Q3 is already done basically. We're rolling into Q4. So at what point, you know, you start the year, you're very curious about what's gonna happen. You know, you're curious, hey, how are we gonna do this year? We had put a goal to grow 20%. And somewhere along the way, the curiosity stopped, the implementation stopped, and you're like, oh shit, here we go. (laughs) Can I just get to Thanksgiving? (laughs) And then I'm gonna restart. some target. (laughs) And I think, you know, uh, we always push, and our advisors are freaking awesome at it, and they always push our clients to make sure that they're, they're overachieving their goals but we all know you know when the holidays come you you start becoming less curious and you just start going status quo because you want to get through the year um but start looking at this year like how if i haven't reached my goals what do i need to ask like what quite like how do i get there what do i need to be curious about like so i can open relationships so q4 is about opening relationships so that q1 of next year is more successful than you've ever been before so what how out of curiosity start looking at all right what can i do in q4 to make sure that i i can quadruple next year this is the time to be curious it's the end of the year most people start to i like to say follow the uh fall asleep at the wheel syndrome it's people start going to sleep like this is the time to take over like you're people tend to explode towards the end of the year because those are the ones that are willing to do more than just wait for Thanksgiving, wait for Halloween, wait for Christmas. So you need to be curious in the nature of, all right, Q4 is here. What is everybody else doing? How can I deviate from that? And then make sure that I set myself up for um, 2025 to be my best year ever. I mean, it's it's a crucial time. I think we, we've seen a lot of um, you know DSOs, those group practices form, all of those. We work with a lot of groups, work with a lot of people that are trying to become groups. And those are the ones that are being curious. How do I get it done? The ones that aren't being curious right now are the ones that are like, I'm going to be able to be a single location forever. So you need to start thinking in the ideas of, all right, curiosity, Q4. Just start thinking outside of the box and then start putting an implementation plan in place. You can't just be curious, guys. Like I want you to understand that because that's where you're going to, you're going to miss when you're listening to this concept. You can't just be curious. You have to be intentional too. You have to be curious, get the answers you want, and then go implement on some of the stuff. Don't just go gather a shit ton of information and not implement any of it. You're going to be in a worse spot. You're just going to have a whole lot of ideas and no execution on the back end of it. Number one, you're going to drive your team crazy. And number two, you're going to wake up and realize, why am I not there? Well, you had all these ideas, but you never executed on them. So be curious, but also be curious in your implementation. If you've if you've, if you've you've done something in the past, it wasn't successful, but you really believed in it, reopen up the curiosity on that concept and say, why wasn't it successful? What could I do differently? Was it, did I not have the right team? Can I hire someone to do this and it'll be a better result this next time? Start thinking of those things. One little curiosity could lead to, to a breakthrough that could ultimately transform your 2025. And I think that's kind of one of the messages that I'm getting out of this, you know, podcast. I think it's always funny too when we do these podcasts. You and I will kind of go off the cuff and stuff and then half the time I'm like listening in like okay, yeah. And I start thinking about our situations and how we can use this too. So it's like I'm an active listener as well too, which is always kind of fun. Um but I think, you know, approaching to sum it all up, to approaching Q4, what can you be curious about that'll let you be more successful in 2025? That's what you guys need to start looking at and then start putting implementation plan. We always say too, like if you're not, if you haven't started planning for 2025 now, you're losing. Shit, I'm planning for 2029. Like we talk about <laughs> all the time. We're future forecasting left and right. Like this isn't a 30, 60, 90 plan. This is a 12, 24, 48, <laughs> all the way to 2030. Like I think 2030 is here. Like you have another, you have, what have you done the last decade? And that's what we've been looking at. I mean, you know, we've been doing tower leadership strong that we've grown every single year. So now we're looking at the next phase. Like what does this look like in 2030? What does this look like 2040? It's always fun when you, you get curious about those type of things. And then you just have to start putting a game plan around it. Here's your miss, mission for the week is, is what do you need to be curious about? Right? What's the kind of thing holding you back? Um, you know, whether it, it could be personal, you know, what would I have to do to have a better marriage? Right. It could be physical. You know, what do I need to do to get in shape? What's the one thing I could do today that's simple, easy, and would start my path to a better health? I always call it 
Uh, I haven't talked about this for years. But I call it the epicentric decision. Usually there's a decision, one decision that affects the next decision, the next decision, the next decision. Like getting up early, for instance, could affect your ability to go to the gym, get, go to the gym, probably eat a different breakfast, eat a different breakfast, start to lose weight, start to lose weight, probably have more energy, probably have more energy, probably become a better leader, become a better leader, probably become a better spouse, probably make more money. And so there's usually like one decision that affects everything else. So I would go back and say, you know, what is, you know, what is the one decision or what are the few key decisions you need to make uh, or be curious about to give you the answers to, for you to start to scale and grow the way you need to. And then second would be, now, who do I need to help me implement this? And yeah. if you have those two things, because you might not have the time, talent or ability to or knowledge to implement so then you say, okay, who could help me implement this, right? There's only a few of us out there in the dental world that can do what Tower can do. There's only a few of them and, and no one's sitting down doing the advisory part that we're doing and probably not the accounting or tax side and not doing the consulting side, but that's all another conversation. But, but you know, there's only a few of us with this kind of knowledge that can help you grow and scale to the level you need to. So, so what you know, so be curious and then go get help. Who's your who that can help you get there? And, uh, you know, it might be a capital partner. It might be uh, uh, an advisory partner. It might be a, a tax CPA. It could be a, an operations person. Um, but, but if you answer those two questions just from this podcast, man, I tell you what, it, it could make you millions. This is a great one. I think what is a good uh, hot streak continuation. We, uh, we've been in the studio a lot. I think um, for you new listeners, thank you for being curious. <laughs> I had to throw that little uh, pundit that in there for uh, all the new. Pub. What's, what's all the new is about? <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, I mean, you know, be curious with this podcast too. Like I always tell you, like ask questions too. Like send me a message. Like I've, I've given out my freaking work email to you guys, Matthew at Tower Leadership. Send me something you want me to talk about. You know, Eric and I are always in the studio. We always want to make this relevant to you guys. We want you guys to be curious as well. So if there's some topic that you've heard about or if there's some – something you would like us to talk about just send me an email and say hey can you guys talk about this and i'm happy to do that so um as a, always send a send a send it seriously take up your phone right now like you're listening to this all of you are either listening to somewhere stationary you're at the gym hopefully you're not driving but if you are driving just pull over for a second and just open your phone and and say new email matthew at towerleadership.com do it like do it right now and Write one thing you're curious about, like, and just hit send. Like you would be surprised it it might that that answer we might do on the podcast might be the game changer for your business. So don't miss the opportunity because you're busy. Don't let busyness take over the day. Um, you know, there's a the difference between being busy and productive, right? Spending a moment to ask a question that could be a game changer for your career um, is productive. So you know, are you? curious right going back to implementation are you truly curious or did you just listen to this podcast and tell yourself i need to be more curious like specifically are you more curious and what are you curious about and then are you willing to implement it so are you willing to pick up your phone and send a message and if you're not willing to pick up your phone and send a message because you're too busy you know the time you've got all the answers whatever else then you've got to question your ability to actually hit the goals you want to and maybe it's because you won't pull over and just send a quick email yeah be curious blow up my email box please <laughs> uh be curious um as always mr morin pleasure having you in the studio uh it's right. always it's always fun to do these podcasts we're gonna keep the streak alive uh we got a guest speaker coming in the, the next uh podcast so be weary of that um and then we'll take from there so as always like share subscribe uh, we do this for you guys. So if you want us to talk about something, just send me a quick email and then we'll take it from there. So thanks for joining.